Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to lecture number 10 of Advanced Computer Architecture. The topics we will cover today is uh, elements of cache design. We started chapter number 4 in last lecture and we discussed some characteristics of memory, uh, memory hierarchy. We will continue the same discussion about memory. We will talk about cache addresses. We will talk about virtual addresses. So that's chapter number four. So we already talked about the uh, characteristics of memory. Now uh, we discuss spatial locality and we discussed temporal locality. Uh, by special locality, we mean that those instructions or that data that are closer together in memory are accessed frequently. By temporal locality, we mean that those instructions that are accessed recently is more likely to be accessed again. So in order to exploit this, we use different levels of memory like the code or the data that we need most frequently, we keep it closer to the processor, maybe in registers, maybe in cache. And the data that is not accessed most frequently is kept in the memory. And, uh, well, permanently the data is stored in the HDD. So semiconductor memory comes in a variety of types, which differ in speed and cost. And we use three levels to exploit uh, this characteristic like to exploit the fact that memory comes with different cost and different speed data that need to be permanently stored is stored in the external device and external uh, memory is also uh, referred to as secondary memory or auxiliary memory there is this concept of disk cache so what we mean by disk cache is that like when we have data in the cache we need to update it to the RAM. And when we have data in the RAM, we need to update it to the HDD. But this updation is time consuming. It consumes cycle. So when we have data in the RAM, it's not that only one bit is changed and I need to update data in the HDD. We store this data in the disk cache. And after some time, we update the data in the HDD. So the portion of main memory is used as a buffer to hold data temporarily. That is to be stored, that is to be read out to disk. A few large transfers of data can be used instead of many small transfers of data. This is the advantage of disk cache. And data can be retrieved rapidly from the software cache rather than slowly from the HDD. So these are the different levels of uh, uh, memory. So this is a figure which uh, says cache and main memory. And if we look to figure number A, uh, it has CPU and cache. And this is word transfer. The, the, the unit of transfer is word or byte. And it's very fast. It's slower than registers, but it's faster than main memory. And the uh, transaction between main memory and cache is block transfer. So we transfer groups of words that we call it a block. And this uh, access is slow, slower than cache, but faster than HDD. And in most recent architectures, uh, we are using different levels of cache. So it's not that we rely on a single cache, but we use multiple levels of cache like L1, L2, L3. So most recent uh, architecture, most current architectures, they are using uh, three levels of caches. Again, it depends on the architecture. Some architectures are using L1 and L2 alone, but most of the architectures um, these days, they are using L3 cache as well in order to improve the performance. So this is the structure of cache and main memory. Uh, figure number A show the cache structure. So in cache, we have take, which we also call line number. So if we have a cache of size C, so we have line number from 0 to C minus 1, and every line number is representing a block. So block of data from the main memory is loaded into cache. And these blocks, if you look to figure number B, that's main memory. These blocks are actually contain group of um, bytes or words. They are grouped to make a block. So 
a blog may have any number of words for example k words so this is just the main structure this is the algorithm that is used when we want to access when we don't want to have a read address so this is just a flow chart so let's say uh, if, uh, cache receives address read access from CPU so is the block containing read access is in cache so if it is in the cache what happened we fetch this address and give it to CPU and we are done but what happens if we do not have this data in the cache so we have to go to the main memory main memory uh, access main memory for block containing read access allocate cache line for main memory block now what happens is that if RAM contains this data so then we allocate cache line for main memory block and we, de we deliver that read access word to CPU and we are done but if the data is not in the RAM what happens we will load main memory block uh, into uh, cache line so we will load data from HDD to RAM and then from the RAM we will load it to the uh, cache line and then we are done. So this is the cache read uh, operation. Like for example CPU, it access cache, so it's control. Control means read or write. It may be address, it may be data. Uh, when uh, cache has again control to the system bus like whether it want to read data from the RAM or write data to the RAM so if the data is in the cache we directly get data from the cache if the cache does not have the data what we do we go to the system bus to access data from the RAM or HDD so the address buffer contain the addresses and data buffer contain data so these are few elements of uh, cache design we will discuss these in detail so cache addresses cache addresses can be logical or physical in case we are using virtual memory then we use logical addresses but if we are directly accessing ram or cache then we use physical addresses cache size is an important parameter mapping function this these are very important uh, methods uh, of mapping and we will have a complete lecture on these techniques direct associato set associato we will discuss this in detail replacement algorithm like cache is smaller than ram what happens if we want to load data from the ram but there is no space in the cache so we need to make space in the cache and for that we need to use a replacement algorithm different replacement algorithms are used like least recently used first in first out least frequently used are just random write policy write policy means when we have data in the ram and we want to update to the hdd so what kind of policy do we use two types are very common write through and write back we will discuss this in detail line size is important and the number of caches whether we have single or two level like l1 l2 or maybe l3 cache unified or split like we have a, a separate cache for data and separate cache for um, instruction so this is uh, cache addresses virtual memory so what happens in virtual memory it's a facility that allows program to address memory from a logical point of view without regard to the amount of memory physical available like if i have 4 gb ram and i allocate some uh, some space in hdd to be treated as virtual memory so when we are using virtual memory the address field of machine instruction contain virtual addresses because the data may be in the ram there may be data in the virtual ram for read to and writes from main memory a hardware memory management unit translates each virtual address into a physical address in main memory what happens is for example uh, figure number a is logical cache so processor access cache it produces logical address and if the data is in the cache we get data from the cache but if the data is not in the cache this logical address go to MMU where it is translated into physical address and the data from the RAM is accessed here uh, we are using virtual uh, memory as virtual cache but the idea is the same you can use uh, virtual memory in HDD or you can use virtual memory in RAM to increase the size of the cache 
if there if there is no um, uh, virtual cache, what happened? We still have logical address. MMU translated to physical address, and this physical address is checked in the cache. Or if it does not find in the cache, it checks in the memory. So there's the advantage of uh, virtual memory. There are some links that explain these uh, concept that we discuss. So this uh, figure contains uh, uh, different cache sizes of some most commonly used processors uh, like for example IBM 360 mainframe computer which was introduced in 1968 it had 16 to 32 KB L1 cache there was no concept of L2 cache actually L2 cache was not common until 1993 where Pentium PC introduced this L2 cache so L1 cache had 8 KB 8 KB it means 8 KB data cache and 8 KB instruction cache and 256 to 512 L2 cache and then L3 cache was uh, was uh, became popular in PowerPC G4 system and they had a split cache for L1 like instruction cache and data cache and they had L2 unified cache and L3 unified cache and then some other system that did not had L3 but uh, since 2001 we commonly see these L1, L2, L3 cache, like the, the most recent one is Core i7, and we have six, given that we have six processors, so every processor has um, L1 data cache and instruction cache, L2 is shared between maybe three processors, so 1.5 MB, and then 12 MB is L3 cache. So this cache size is a very important parameter. People are uh, researching about this uh, cache size because if cache size is small enough, the overall average cost per bit is close to that of main memory. So if we have very small cache, so uh, we cannot load all the, the main memory to the cache. We need to load and unload some data and, and therefore there is no uh, advantage. But on the other hand, if cache is large enough, the overall average access time is close to that of cache alone. So in that case, the, 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 the need of RAM is not justified. So there must be a trade-off, like there must be some middle way of the cache size. So larger the cache, larger the number of gates involved to address cache, hence large caches tend to be slightly slower than small ones. So this is another thing. Uh, and available chip and board area also limit cache size. And with the current technology, it's impossible to have a single optimum cache size. I told you before that people are working uh, in this uh, 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 design for performance improvement and they have developed different, uh, they are trying different cache sizes, but until today, we have not uh, uh, found any optimal cache size that can be used and that can give you ultimate performance. We are experimenting with different cache sizes. Thank you very much. See you in the next lecture.